welcome back to our last segment of Community Hotline tonight. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. I now have with me um, Noni Kasi, who is the Executive Director of BEAM, which is the Black Educational Achievement Movement. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So the Black Educational Achievement Movement is an organization uh, that is, we're going to talk about a, a, an event that you're putting on, mm -hmm. but your goal and your mission is what? Oh, I think if I have any goal throughout this whole thing is to create a pipeline. I'm from Portland, uh, born and raised here. I come from the Portland Public School District, um, from the Jefferson Cluster, worked at community college, uh, went to the community college in my neighborhood. And the one thing that I think I would love to say that BEAM does is to create a village mm -hmm. around um, black students and their families, or black identified students, and also to create a different pipeline and to change the narrative um, for education for black students in this state. I know that all schools have issues, mm -hmm. and our schools here in Oregon have plenty of them. What what are the particular obstacles that you would see uh, for, for black or African-American students that, that other kids maybe don't have to deal with? Well, I mean, like, I think when I started this, it was, I thought I was really happy. Um, I had been in social work a long time, and I worked at the community college, and I would see students spend three to five years trying to get a two-year degree. And I would see students walk out with thirty and forty thousand dollars worth of debt. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is insane. And and at the time I was in graduate school and I started to do some research on my own and, and looked at a study that said that black students came into the community college at a rate of like six point two percent. But they only left and completed at a rate of one point. They only transferred at a rate mm. of like 1.2. And I was like, oh my goodness. So, so what's happening in between? Yeah, what now? is happening in between? Yeah. And why aren't students finishing? And what's going on? So, you know, the, the longer I've worked there, the more we talked to colleagues and, and our PSU um, colleagues. And we said, look, we have got to stop the hemorrhaging. If, if we really want our children to be successful, not only can we just show them things, but we have to talk to them. And, mm -hmm. and so this was our first attempt. So this is the third year. So the first year was at the community college and it was just designed for community college students that wanted to go to the university. And so we had- So trying to, to help them make yes, that transition? Yes, make that transition. Okay. And, and that last, it was um, the most amazing thing. The magic um, kind of happened. We put a call out to the community and said, you know, would people come and, and just participate? And people were just, sure, we'll come talk we'll do a workshop we'll so this was this. for the summit Is yeah this? Oh, okay. this was for the first summit and people just came because of their heart they came with their heart in their hand um, there were no fees everybody dropped their titles they they didn't come in as doctor so-and-so or the masters or right. PhD they just came because they wanted to help students right. students that look like them they're, they're, pa they're passionate about helping those yes. kids advance and, yes yeah. and 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 creating that pipeline right. and right. so um, after that, um, ODE came to me and, and we had um, a conversation and so they asked me to reach out to high school students. So the second year, um, we actually outgrew PCC and the second year we were at Portland State and last year we had over 300 students attend the summit. Wow. And we got people as far as Eugene, Corvallis, um, down around the coastal areas. And it was just amazing to watch um, young people come together because you hear so many negative things about what black youth are, you know, whether mm -hmm, it's in mm -hmm. gangs or this or right, drive-by shootings right. and all that. And, and you hear these dismal graduation rates and you never see the ones that are really trying, that are that, the that really, the successes, and, yeah, right? Yeah. The ones that are going to college, the ones that want to be biologists, the ones that, that, that want to be doctors and lawyers and, and scientists. And so, you know, the good part about this summit is we look for black professionals all throughout the state and, and other places and say, can you come and give us three hours? Can you tell um, a young person, what do you think the three major things that somebody, what do you wish that, you know, we were all young ones. Mm -hmm. We all um, needed somebody, somebody to right, tell us something, right, right? right? And I think we get in our jobs and we get real comfortable and we forget because we're on that daily thing mm -hmm. that we do. And so this is just an opportunity for people to come um, I have to let this year we have a uh, 
She does autopsies on people. Yes, wow. she's a forensic scientist. It's like a CSI thing. Yes, <laughs> right? I was like, oh my goodness. You know, wow. and then we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have. So um, these are people who can be role models for absolutely. these and inspirations. To inspiration. Them. And yeah. then we know that all students aren't going to four year university, but yeah. education is education. So we have the trades that Good. that Good. come in. And, and I saw a picture and there was a IBEW science yes. the, uh, uh -huh. electrical workers. Yep, union. absolutely. We have, they, they've supported me all, all three yeah. years IBEW. Um, we have Construction Hope, which is one of the largest pre-apprentice yeah. programs, and, yeah. and they have an amazing rate of graduation with African-American students. I, I mean, like, sometimes you can't be what you can't see. And that's, if you don't know it exists, that's oh, that, right. there's an opportunity for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, I think a lot of kids don't, they don't, if they come up in a household, perhaps, where their parents and their family or their, you know, community right around them, hasn't gone above, you know, maybe a very low level job. Maybe they don't know that they can go further than that. Absolutely. They seen that. You know, I was the first person in my family that graduated from college, you know, and, yeah. and I didn't go back until I was um, well over 40. You know, I was a non traditional returning student, and, and it was my lived experience. But not only that, I was raising four boys that, you know, I had one in college, I had two in high school, wow. and one in middle school. And like, the only reason I think my oldest son really left for college, because I remember. I remember when he told me he was going to college, I thought, wait, I'm not ready, don't do this, like, I, I don't know what I'm doing, right? And and it was through, um, he had worked with SEI and mm -hmm, had been, mm -hmm. he was a ball player, so he got recruited, you know. He had some opportunities. He had some opportunities yeah. that his other brothers, like, they weren't ball players, they right, were, right. you know. So, um, what I know is that there's not one way to success, right? right? There's right. many, many opportunities in there. Sure, you can be a sports, you know, you can yeah. be involved in sports, and sometimes that'll give you some good opportunities. Sometimes, but if you're not very that small. person, yeah, but then, if, yeah. then what? Yeah, then what are the other opportunities? Yeah. What are the other opportunities? So you hear, you know, you either see the very successful ball players in sports, or you see um, the teen parents and right, right. the dismal. But where are the prison or whatever? Yeah, yeah. where yeah. are the people that the are in the middle? And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It seems to me that this summit um, would really foster some leaders. Oh my that, goodness! Am, am I right about that? You want to hear about leaders? So this was <laughs> this is just the the most amazing thing today. Uh, we work with Beam um, is 501c3, and we work with many smaller um, agencies and people who are in the school district doing the work, they running mentoring groups. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. we partner with Blueprint Foundation, with Sister Sister, with Tomorrow's Journey. Um, several smaller things and so today um, this week we reached out and we work within our community so I reached out to a, a girls group called sister sister so we have five young girls who are doing media right they're covering this they have their cameras their press passes they're between that. 10 and 14 and they're going to cover that's what we do <laughs> so yes and, and they're, they're perfect for yes that. and they're coming out they're they're being groomed to ask questions and so they're going to cover right. this and and what an opportunity this year we already have over 500 students pre-registered wow. for this event yes you have your registration yeah. form well, there right absolutely yeah, because so, I didn't yeah, send in a paper. I didn't yeah. send in any pictures because I've been totally busy this week. So this is this is your yeah. registration form. So yes, and all mm -hmm. people have to do really everything is free. Breakfast, lunch. Wow. We have 22 workshops throughout the day that start at 8 a.m. and don't end until 4. We have a lunch. We have. Um, caucus groups that go on and just give people an opportunity to have space to talk about, you know, the issues that they see that are prevalent, you know, within their community. Right. You know, how do you navigate this school thing? Like, what is it to, to be financially stable? Or what do you do when you get all these loans? Or how do you take out, yeah. what's a financial aid packet? You know, so we have- That's a lot of, it's it's, a lot of stuff. No, this is on is. Saturday, March 5th. This right? is on Saturday, March 5th, and students just go to beamvillage.org. Um, so that's B-A-M-V-I-L-L-A-G-E, all one word, beamvillage.org, and just sign up. You can sign up as a volunteer, you can sign up as um, as a student, high school or college. But you want them to register so you know how much food to have Absolutely. and that kind of thing, Absolutely, because right? okay. we have to cap registration yeah. off at yeah. 600. But because of this, um, so when I talk about beam building a pipeline, the, one of the most amazing things is last year, students kept saying, I wish somebody would have told me this sooner. I <laughs> yeah. wish. So this year we launched our first middle school summit. So. I was just going to say, uh, the first thing I was thinking was, 
Christian, you'll be in the middle school. Oh my goodness, because yes. Because they need to, they, 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 the middle school, oh. if you get to high school, for a lot of kids it's too late. Yes, absolutely. And like people need to dream now, right? Yeah. When they're in middle yes. school. Yes. So yes. we had 91 middle schoolers uh, January 7th over at the University of Portland. And Love it that. was amazing. <laughs> and where were these kids from? Just uh, from they Oliver were from um, the Jefferson Cluster, the Roosevelt Cluster, and the Madison Cluster. Okay. We did yeah. our first trial run. And, and it was amazing to see, you know, these young kids. And one, at the end of the day, I asked kids, like, so what did you learn? And, and they went to financial literacy classes. Mm -hmm. And one kid stood up. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and he couldn't have been no more than like four feet tall. And he says, I learned that there's a time to play and there's a time to be serious. <laughs> and this is a serious matter. <laughs> oh, how cute. I, was like, oh, I oh, love my it. Goodness. But, you know, you instill those kinds of values in, in kids at that yes. young age. And you know, it's going to stick with them. Absolutely. And it was all people that look like them so we talked about African culture we talked about you know all the wonderful things that you don't hear you know pride, um, in, pride in your identity and absolutely and, and this big you know thing about bringing in cultural identity within the schools mm -hmm. so so all kids are reflected in the textbooks and, and in yeah. the curriculum and, and, and further on in the careers absolutely <laughs> right? you know some of our children have never seen a black teacher you know oh, wow. and and that's pretty yeah. sad to me yeah. is that you can go your whole existence in the state of Oregon Again, and not see a teacher that looks like you okay. and yeah. not be reflected. It's amazing. Now, I think I just, think I just got word that we have our video available um, that we're going to show. So There's a video? We, <laughs> already? That's what, what I think that you provided. I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to show it or not, but I think we have that available. Right. So let's, let's take a look at that. All right. Oh. A picture, a video? Wow. <laughs> Which is the last one? What brought me over to the Black Student Success Summit is the opportunity to help other students see the broader picture in terms of their educational pursuits and also where they go after they get their four-year degree. I think that this is really important. I like the fact that they've also included high school students because if I had the opportunity to go to something like this when I was in high school, I would have been there every year. just to attend any, uh, any workshop that has to do with the education of uh, young students from high school all the way to grad school. Meeting so many black people here that I've never seen before. Like this feels like a college tour to me. That workshop was very meaningful for me to just hear all the different stories and experiences um, that people had, uh, and also understanding that that I'm not alone. I have so much profound love and respect and appreciation and commitment to black folks. Mm -hmm. So anytime I can share some of my insight, some of my stories, some of my perspectives, some of my research, some of the things that I'm up to with, with, with folks who I know that if they get it, it can maybe help their plight, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just committed to that. I think it's very important that we come together in the summer because we want to teach these students to invest in themselves, increase their earning potential, find their passions. Uh, I felt supported and kind of understood and uh, got some really good insight into how I can do things differently. It gives high school students the opportunity to know what they're going to get into when they attend college. Yes, diversity is an important issue. We need to increase the diversity of our talent pool because right now we're only reaching a fraction of the available talent pool to actually solve the world's problems. Wow, you do have some great partners, I can tell, people that are involved mm -hmm. with that. So so this um, is the Black Student Success Summit, mm -hmm. and it's going to be on March 5th. Yep. And Portland State University in the Smith yep. Center. Yep. 
and that's 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So you said if, if kids are interested, high school and, and um, college. college age kids, and And their parents, I wanna welcome, I wanna okay. like, cause yes, we'll have workshops for parents. We want okay. this to be community, right? right? Um, because like I said, I was a parent and I didn't know what to do. You so parents parent. get to, oh, yeah, I am <laughs> yeah. a parent. Whew, <laughs> they're, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I mean, this is an opportunity for parents to come and learn about, you know, what does financial aid look like? What, what does it look for my kid to get a scholarship? Right. Um, We'll have 10 different colleges there. We have two uh, HBCUs. Tuskegee University is flying wow. in. We have Alabama um, University that will be there and all the Oregon and Washington colleges. Um, we'll have 12 employers talking to kids all day long. Yeah, we have some amazing partners that it come to It will be a great table. opportunity for kids to uh, get some role models and also do a little networking. And absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and often it's a, a chance for employers. When you say you want to diversify your staff, where else are you going to find? hundreds of qualified college students, professionals, and our emerging leaders that are coming in. That's great. Yeah. I love what you're doing. We're out of time, but thank you so much, Nelly, for thank being on today. Thank you for having me. This is, it sounds like a wonderful organization, and I hope that success is a huge summit. It sounds like it's already on its way. All so, right. Yeah. Thank you so you much. Bet. Thanks so much for watching Community Hotline tonight. We had a lot of stuff about education and about things that you can do to, to help your community, so be generous with your money, be generous with your time, and um, Remember, we are a community, We're a, we are a village. So yeah. thanks very much, I'm Monica Weitzel. You've been watching Community Hotline.